What's on ladies and gentlemen, my name's Ross, I like games, and today we need to take another look at Premium Booster 01. You see the other day I showed you about the Golden Don, the Super Parallel Don, I told you that they went from Iceberg at 4,000 yen, which seems way too low, but that's one of my favourites, I'm definitely picking one of those up, all the way up to Rowan Oazoro at 40,000 yen, which is huge and absurd and yowza. But we only looked at the Super Parallel Dom. That is one per case. And frankly, we need to look at the rest of the set. We need to see which of the cards for the rest of the set are most sought after, most wanted, most wished for. I don't know. Phrase it how you will. That's what we're going to be having a look at today. And it actually does make quite a nice top 10. Although I'm going to be honest with you, 7, 8, 9, and 10 all come in at 3,000 yen, so I'm going to go here at number 10 for Vinsmoke Raju. I've had a look around in a few places. They're all about 3,000 yen. I think they're in the right order, but please just bear in mind that these will change over time. Like They're not going to stay exactly like this as we go along, so I'm doing my best here. I think they're all in the right order, but they are all very close and subject to change. For what it's worth, 3,000 yen converts to somewhere in the region of $19. You will notice that with a couple of, well, really with one exception, the value in PRB01 is very much in the Golden Dawn. It's really not all that much about... The, the alternate arts here. Like, there's some worth looking at. We're obviously going to look at them in this video. But just as we get rolling, you guys need to know the bulk of the really sought-after cards in this set are actually the Don, not the characters. But in at number 10, we've got Vince Moat Raju at 3,000 yen. I don't know how popular Vince Moat Raju is. Like, there's got to be a little bit here in terms of popularity, or else it wouldn't be on the list. But I'm not sure Vince Smoke Raju is the most popular character around. Like, don't get me wrong, popular enough, obviously, made it onto the list. But I don't think it's one of the heavy hitters in terms of characters in One Piece. What we've got in terms of the character here is one that's seen a little bit of play here and there. We've got your on play, if the number of Don in your field is equal to or less than the number of your opponents, and you've got five or less cards in hand, draw two. It's all right. It's fine. Decent enough card. Decent enough character. I think this one might change. Gecko Moria, however. Oh, this one makes perfect sense to me. Gecko Moria is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the absolute best cards in the entirety of the One Piece TCG. I think Gecko Moria is borderline broken. Because when you play Gecko Moria, you get to choose two characters, one of a cost of four or less, one of a cost of two or less from your trash, and then one gets played normally and one gets played rested. It's an absurd card, which is just... I mean, put it this way, right? At the moment, it's a four of in all the Rob Lucci decks. But before that, it was a four of in Gecko Moria decks that were absolutely crushing back in the OP06 meta. And a four of in the Sakazuki decks, which were crushing in the OP06 meta as well. They were by far the two biggest decks in that meta game. And actually, two meta games in a row, we've seen basically the top deck, or decks, playing a full play set of these. Like, that can't be a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. This is an absurdly good card. It's a really nice alternate art, and I would not be surprised to see this one going up again in the future. It is a redonkulous character, and this is a cool artwork. Coming in at number eight, bearing in mind we're still on 3,000 yen here, we have got the alternate art of the Yamato Secret Rare. And yes, we do need to differentiate these. There is another Yamato that's coming up on this list in a little bit. But this is a secret rare from OP01, the alternate art thereof. It's got Treasure Cruise style art. I think it's Treasure Cruise. It looks like Treasure Cruise to me, put it that way. It's a very cool card. It's one that people keep trying to think is going to be amazing. You've got Double Attack and Banish which is a really good pair of skills. You take off two life, but your opponent doesn't get triggers or add the card to the hand or any of that. It's a really good character. It's one that I'm a huge fan of. 
And it's one that people keep saying is going to end up being good. And it's frankly not ended up being good yet. But I think it's only a matter of time. At some point, I'm convinced this card is going to be nuts. We've got other versions of the card. You don't need this new version. But I'm just telling you this is cool and it's going to get really, really nice. And then finally, we've got ourselves a Boa Hancock from OP01. The number seven card and the final one coming in at 3,000 yen. And what we've got here is your blocker. The Don X1, when attacking or blocking, draw a card if you've got five or less in your hand. It's not a card which we're seeing popping up in every deck right now. But it is a card that we've seen popping up in the past. It's found its way into decks. It's a very nice card. And I expect to see more of it in the future. But we can finally move on from 3,000 yen. In at number 6 at 4,000 yen. We've got the alternate Art Charlotte Katakuri. 4,000 yen is about $26. And Charlotte Katakuri here. It's the alternate art of the secret rare, which is redonkulously good and incredibly playable. This isn't a card that's seen a bit of play here and there and might come around again in the future. This is a card which is an absolute staple in a lot of decks. Because on play, you add a character of a cost of 8 or less to the top or bottom of the owner's life cards face up. You can recover your life. You can get one of your opponent's characters off the board. It's got 8,000 power. It's a very good character, which sees a lot of play. In at number five, we've got the second and final Yamato on the list. The one from OP04, which is coming in at 5,000 yen, which is about $32. And what we've got here is a better Yamato. A Yamato that sees more play and it's just generally a better card. And it's not that the other Yamato isn't good. It's that this Yamato is redonkulous. And that's essentially your answer here. This is the one whereby when you play it, you get to recover a life. Not all the time, of course. There's some conditions that need to be met. But just so long as you've got one or less, and in an Aldex you will, you get an extra life. Plus, you get to KO one of your opponent's characters of a cost equal to or less than the total of yours and your opponent's life. So, it's a 9k body, and when you play it, you get to take out one of your opponent's characters. That's a good thing. And, at the same time, you also get to recover a life. I'm just saying this is pretty gosh darn good. And, like I say, it's better than the other Yamato, so... Fair to say this was always going to end up being a little bit higher. In at number 4, also at 5,000 yen, we've got the alternate art of the Starter Deck 10 lore. And yes, it's 5,000 yen, but I do think it is, at the moment, just that little bit higher. There's not much in it, but I think this is just on top by a little bit. And look, lore decks right now are the best decks in the format. And this is a blocker that's got Dom minus 1. If your opponent's got 7 or more cards in hand, trash 2. So it keeps your opponent's hand under control while also putting a blocker on the board. And like I say, it, it, it's a decent part of that lore deck that everybody seems to like so much right now. And yeah, few reasons here why this is such a redonkulously good card. In at number three, we've got Luffy coming in at 6,000 yen. Yeah, that's right. We managed to get a Luffy on the list in the end before we finished we got ourselves a Luffy. Now, specifically here, it is your Gear 5 Luffy, the secret rare from OP05, and alternate art thereof. And yeah, it, it, it's phenomenal. Now, it's still not a card which sees all that much play, and I'm, I'm sure it should be seeing a lot more play, or will at some point in the future. But it's got Don minus 10, which is obviously absurd, right? You, you lose all of your Don. And all of your characters other than Luffy go to the bottom of your deck in any order, but then you get an extra turn. Also, activate main once per turn, pay one to get an extra Don out active. Just saying that also seems like a pretty gosh darn good skill. Would be weird if we got through this list without getting a Luffy down here, but we did get a Luffy down, and that makes me happy. And actually, in terms of your quote-unquote normal alternate arts, your standard alternate arts, phrase it how you will, Luffy comes in at number one. Oh, how rude of me, I never told you. It's 6,000 yen, which comes in at $39. 
And in terms of your regular alternate arts, like I said, Luffy is number one. We need to take a big jump up to number two, but it's a different kind of card. It's the alternate art Sanji leader coming in at 13,000 yen, which equates to $84. And here's the thing with a Sanji leader. I'm hearing very low pull rates compared to what we would generally expect for alternate art leaders. I'm hearing like one per case or thereabouts. I don't think it's a strict one per case like the Gold Dawn, for instance. But I am hearing we are talking at, you know, that kind of level of pull rate, maybe even a little bit lower. It is, frankly, a very hard to pull card. And I've been on record as saying I think this is my favorite leader in the game so far. Because we've got Activate Main once per turn. Give one of your eight cost or lower characters that doesn't have an on-play skill rush. I think this is brilliant. I love it. I am building around nothing else until I am convinced it is not a viable deck. And I love that. And that makes me happy. And then obviously number one is Manga Nami. But we all knew that, right? It's a Manga Rare. Manga Rares are always going to end up being the number one. It would be weird at this stage if anyone was surprised by this. But because the Manga Rares are going to be the number one cards in the set. That's always going to be the case. Obviously, this is the same Nami that had the redonkulous alternate art in OP01. But this is the Manga Rare. It's your generic Straw Hat Searcher. Searches out your Straw Hat Crew, which is actually still a very good playable card in some builds. And frankly, it's awesome. And of course, it's Nami coming in at somewhere in the region of about 130,000 yen, which is obviously, well, it's exactly 10 times the number two card, that being your Sanji. So it's about $840. Not quite as high as I was expecting. I mean, still on the higher end of Manga Res, don't get me wrong, but a little bit lower than I might have been expecting. But there we go. It's worth noting, of course, that the Gold Dawn are... I mean, really, like, all of the top Gold Dawn, including basically half of the Gold Dawn, are significantly higher than all but the Sanji leader here, and the Nami, obviously. The Gold Dawn is really where it's at, but there are some alternate arts that are worth picking up. For me, I am delighted. Alternate art Koala is one of my favorites. A thousand yen. Uh, for anyone that, that wants to do the maths on that one, a thousand yen is like six bucks fifty. Or the... One-Legged Soldiers, another one I absolutely adore here. 1,500 yen. There are some cheap cards. And a lot of these alternate arts are going to be coming in incredibly low. So a lot of the ones that you want to be picking up, unless they are the heavy hitters in the set, I think you might end up being rather happy. But for now, I want to know what you think about all of this. So let me know in the comment section. Got us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.